Have you ever seen a fight that didn't end up with two people like holding on to each other and hugging each other or roll, rolling around and wrestling each other? Me neither, or if I have, it's very few. No matter what martial art you're into, no matter what combat sport you enjoy watching, man, even hockey, <laughs> even football, even baseball, when you see like the bench is clear and a fight breaks out, sooner or later, everybody's kind of holding on to each other and uh, it's inevitable. So it's one of the more important things that you need to learn for any sort of self-defense is what do you do when somebody grabs onto you and starts holding you or you need to grab onto them and start holding onto them. Once you wind up in that spot where you're holding onto them and they're holding onto you, it's called a clinch. So today we're working on how to fight from the clinch. Stay with me. What's up warriors? It's Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, so the next installment in our Self-Defense 101 series is fighting from the clinch. And we're not doing any techniques today that you haven't learned in the other videos. So we did like a video on punching, a video on kicking, a video on stance and guard, uh, some knee strikes, some elbow strikes. And we covered pretty much all of the techniques, I think just about all of them, uh, that we're going to work on today. The concept today is whether it's like a bar fight, a playground fight, uh, pretty much any fight. When you get too close or you get kind of fatigued, and you even watch professional martial artists, professional fighters, when they get fatigued and they get in close, they're going to kind of hold on to each other to, one, catch their breath, which it's a useful tool for that. Um, or they come in for that clinch because they're fixing to pick you up and slam you on your head or worse. So the clinch is when two people just wind up holding on to each other. Maybe it's with one hand, maybe it's with both hands. They might be grabbing each other by the clothing, they might be grabbing each other by the hair, they might be grabbing each other by their jacket or their hood or their jersey or whatever. The idea is anytime you're close enough and you're kind of using your hands to hold on to them instead of cracking them, you're in the clinch. If you're holding on to them for balance, you're in the clinch. If you're holding on to them to catch your breath, you're in the clinch. In a clinch, just like we went over fighting stances and horse stances and, and like different ways in a fight, do this first. I hope you saw that video. If you didn't watch that, check that out. Um, the different types of stances you'll find yourself in. So if you just stand upright and hold on to somebody or stand upright when they're holding on to you, you're very easy to topple. You're very easy to pick up and fling or throw. So one of the things you wanna make sure you do first is establish good balance for yourself, a good position or a good stance for yourself. And hopefully in doing that, you're gonna do it where you're kind of pulling them off balance. You wanna have balance and you wanna take their balance away. So one of the ways you do that is, uh, again, I'm sure there's a million ways to do this. Depend if you're a martial artist or you, you train in some sort of thing and you do it differently, let me know because I'm always looking for uh, you know, new and better things to add to my system. But the way I've been doing it forever, I wind up in a clinch. The first thing I do is I yank my hips back. I hold on to the back of their neck. Um, I use my arm like a hook around the back because they don't have a shirt on, it still works. Uh, they have a t-shirt, it's like a flimsy thing, like, you know, summertime, t tank top, that thing's gonna rip right off. So you hold on to the back of their neck, like I make my arm into a, like a candy cane, no thumb, I put my thumb on the side of my hand, just wrap it around, wrap it around, and I, I use my forearm to put some pressure like into the collarbone, heavy pressure on the head and the neck, pulling the head down, pressure on the collarbone with my forearm, and now, again, even if you're not big or strong, a small person, let's make you, like you're hanging on them. Hook, pressure down, pull back. And now when I pull back, it's almost like if somebody grabbed me by my belt or the back of my pants was pulling my, my, me away from them. So I kind of hips back, feet out, legs bent. And when I'm doing that, I'm also pulling them down. So I want like clinch, I don't want to stand like this because they're going to be looking like sneak under and a jujitsu guy, a wrestler, man, they're going to know how to throw you on the floor. And... You could try all this stuff and a good jujitsu fighter, a good wrestler is gonna pick you up and slam you no matter what. All right, back to the clinch. Good position, good position. Pull back, pull down. And again, I try to hang on pretty much with one hand. I want my hips back so that if they decide to drop down and shoot for my legs, I could hopefully get my legs away from them or it'd be more challenging for them to get to my legs. So first, thought, first step, control the neck, control the head. Try to pull the head down, your hips back, good balance, good pressure, and I'm trying to keep this hand free so that I can use this to strike, okay? 
If you wind up in there and you don't remember this stuff, and that's very likely like, oh man, I know I watched a video on it. Then, hey, time out. Hey, I got to go check out Kiyoshi's video. I know he had one. Hold on, hold on. I wish it worked that way. If you're in it and you don't pull your hips back and you're kind of like they're holding on to you or they, maybe they have you pinned up against a wall or the bar or your locker or whatever and you're kind of in that clinch, you're already close enough and grabbing onto each other but you don't have room to get your hips back, well, you only have two hands. If you're using both hands to hold onto them, you don't have any left to hit them with. So unless that's part of your plan, like you're going to grab them, load them onto your hip and slam them, grab them, wrap their leg and sweep them or, or, or something, if you're not going to be punching and you're holding on with two hands, then you got to start using your legs as your weapon or your head, which we'll get to in a moment. If you're using your legs, a very simple technique that does not require a whole lot of athletic ability, doesn't require a whole lot of flexibility, it doesn't even require a whole lot of strength, is a knee strike. You're just going to bring your knee straight up, either to the groin, to the side of the leg, where it's called the common peroneal nerve. If you've never got a dead leg, ask one of your friends to give you a dead leg. It's on the outside of your leg just past where your fists dangle on the side. You could chop it, you could punch it, you could kick it, or you could knee strike it. So if you're holding on with two hands, knee strike to the groin, knee strike to the side of the leg, knee strike into their knee, at the waist or lower. So it's not a good chance of them grabbing it. If you do it slowly and they're onto it, they could grab you, but it's not like you're throwing some fancy kick at their head or something. So holding on with two hands, you could either headbutt first, then knee, or you could knee when they go, oh, pull their headbutt, then you headbutt. Um, but again, if you're going to have both hands tied up and unable like, to use them to fight, well, then you have to have some other weapons flying, some other attacks coming to help you get out of this spot, okay? All right, so the next technique, or the next set of techniques that are very useful for this, you're, if you're too close, you can't get off a good, solid right cross, rear cross, reverse punch, whatever, whatever you, your martial arts style calls it. You know, you're a little further away, shh, you, whoa. You're a little further away, you can lay a good technique on them, a good solid punch where you have the room to, to drive your technique, to drive your stance, to drive your hip and all that stuff. Whereas when you're in close, you don't really have the room to do that. So from this range, you're going to be using more of your uh, hook punch, whether to the head, to the body, especially to hold it on to you. A lot of times I'm trying to like sneak around their arm and using my first two knuckles to dig into like the ribs or between the ribs. When you're punching, your uppercut does not necessarily have to be under the chin. Although effective, if you have them kind of leaving, leaning forward, an uppercut could be to the nose, uh, to the eye, to the jaw, to the cheek, the spots around the eye, it's uh, thin skin and lots of capillaries and it bleeds a lot. Uh, try not to get that on you. The idea being, you curl your fingers real tight, your thumbs are on the outside, you're hitting with the front part of your first two knuckles. We say tight fist, strong wrist. Now, if you never made a fist or you got long nails or uh, you hit somebody like, ow, my hand hurts, don't stop. Just open your hand and just imagine the two bones of your forearm coming through your hand. They're going to come through the heel of your palm. So now your uppercut works like this. Now your hook punch works more like this. It's not a slap. I'm trying to strike as if you cut my hand off and these two bones are going to still be there. I'd want to hit with the stump, the, the nub, whatever you call that thing. An uppercut, I'm trying to stab him with those two bones, like Wolverine's claws, hook punch, I'm trying to stab him with those two, two bones, the, the Wolverine claws. Uppercut, hook punch to the body, uppercut, hook punch to the head, holding on to somebody, them holding on to you. A lot of times if you hit somebody low and they, oh, like this, to the groin also, if you're far enough down or they're taller or you're on stairs or there's a million scenarios, you're gonna hit whatever is available. You hit under, and when they bring their elbow in, like, ow, oh, that hurts. Well, now while the hand isn't here, I sneak over the top and try to hit the side of the head. If you hit the side of the head and they hit like, ow, oh, that hurts. When this goes up, then I'm going to try and go underneath again. So you have your uppercuts and your hook punch. And now, ordinarily, if your hands are free, you're kind of using them both. You're always trying to keep swinging and swinging and swinging. But if you're holding on with one, the other one's got to do the work. And understand, they're not going to just stand in and let you do this. So one... When I have to, I cover with this. If this hand is trying to hit me, then I'm going to use this to block. If this hand is trying to hit me, I use the hook, the side that I'm holding on with. If he's trying to hit under, I bring my elbow in to protect as much of my ribs and the side of my, my body as I can. When I feel that elbow go up and he's trying to hit the side of my face, well, now I let my elbow rise up. And I'm trying to always guide. I use my elbow as my guide. 
they're gonna hit under, I bring my elbow to kind of like meet where their arm is. They go to hit over my arm, I bring my elbow wherever their hand is going, I'm like, uh oh. So while I'm holding on, I'm also using this as my shield as well, if that makes sense. Now the next one is your elbow strike. And elbows are fierce, man. They're like a knee strike doesn't require a whole lot of athletic ability, but it's super powerful when you use it. An elbow strike is the same way, provided you're using the correct part of your elbow. So you don't really use the point of your elbow unless you absolutely have to. It's almost like your elbow is a, uh, a baseball bat, and this is the butt of the bat, the handle, the barrel, and the tip. You wanna hit, hit with the barrel. So I don't keep my, my elbow down like a chicken wing and hit with the top part of the muscle. I wanna hit with the bony part, all right? So if my hands are uh, palm down and I bring them toward myself, make my fists, that, that's the part you want, the front part. So an elbow strike to the face. Even elbow strike to the body. Even elbow strike to the solar plexus. You could swing it up, you could swing it across, you could come over the top and strike down. The easiest ones are gonna be similar to your hook punch, throwing an elbow to the face. If you wind up like lower, maybe to the body, but elbowing the head is, is very, very, uh, it's very powerful. If you have a heavy bag at your gym or at your house or at a friend's house or neighbor's house and you have an opportunity to try some of this stuff, do it. Or go on Amazon and get one of these bags sent to your house. I don't work for any of these companies, but it's a great tool. You want to work out, set your clock for, for one minute, your timer for one minute, just wail on the thing and you're going to be like, oh my God, it is work. All right? So quick review. We have our knee strike. We have our uppercuts, either to the body or to the head. You have your hook punch either to the body or to the head. So the last one is a headbutt. And the question always comes up, doesn't a headbutt hurt you? Well, I guess a little bit, but it's gonna hurt the other guy way more, right? So just imagine getting hit in the face with a bowling ball, right? That, that's like a terrible thought. Like, um, like if you were laying on the ground and someone dropped the bowling ball in your head, terrible. Your head is the bowling ball. Now the trick is making sure that you hit with the correct part of your head and ideally hitting the correct part of their head or whatever. So your forehead is relatively flat compared to the rest of your skull, right? So right where your forehead ends and it starts to curve like to like your hairline right around there, that's your frontal bone. When you're first born, your skull has like six parts to it. Six parts, something like that. Anyway, the frontal bone is the hardest part of your skull. Like it's very like, uh, again, if I'm using the wrong words, excuse me, but like the, the convex, convex shape of it, hit with the front. <clears throat> the idea is tuck your chin and you want to hit the nose, the eye socket, the cheek, the ear. I use my head when, when, was, when I fight full contact, uh, in sparring or whatever, wrestling, grappling, all of it. I try to use my head almost like to grind on their ear, on their head, on their face. Like it's almost like a noogie. <laughs> that, they still use that word, a noogie? But I use my head like to grind into them. Now, using your head for pressure, when we're using pressure points, very effective. Using your head for like pressure when you're trying to like, we're rolling around on the ground and we'll get the videos on that also, very effective. But holding on to somebody like, and you just, a headbutt is not with your neck, a headbutt is with your whole body. So just like you don't let your wrist be floppy when you throw a punch, you clench your fist, tight fist, strong wrist. Well, when you're gonna do a headbutt, I make my neck tight, my chin down, and my headbutt comes from the waist. So I kind of lean back and drive my head, unicorn horn, through their face. That's the best way to describe it. And you, if you're on the ground, which again, we'll have videos on that, I use headbutts to their chest, their solar plexus, their sternum, all those areas. It's a, it's a weapon, like, it's, and it's, it hurts. Does it hurt you? A little bit. Does it hurt them a lot? Yes. So it's a little bit scary, and I don't recommend you go start smashing your head into a heavy bag unless you're into that, but uh, it is definitely part of your in-close fighting, close quarter battle, close quarter combat, clinch fighting. So in this range, again, we have our knee strikes. You have things where like heel stomps or stomping to their knees and, and stuff like that. But again, those are a little bit more challenging, a little bit more advanced. So for my beginners and my basic uh, self-defense courses, my beginner basic defensive tactic stuff, I don't even go there. We stick to knee strikes. We stick to uppercut, hook punch, elbow strike, headbutt. And those, if you could just learn those, was that five of them? One, two, three, four, five of them. Man, you stick to those basics and you'll be good to go, all right? Remember the stuff on, on movement as well, because you don't want to just be totally stagnant. And again, we'll have more videos on it when I have one of my live partners back in here. Uh, I can show you more drills like that. But for basics, for 101 purposes, stick to these five, 
okay? So listen up guys, check this out. I love teaching martial arts, I love teaching self-defense, I love teaching people how to defend themselves when there's nobody else there to save you and you have to save yourself. Like, it's one of my favorite things. It's like my, the best thing that I ever did for myself was learning martial arts because it, it gave me strength and confidence in all other things. The flip side to this is that I'm a police officer, right? And if somebody's getting beat up and they defend themselves, no problem, I, I get it. If the person who's getting beat up and defends themselves, all of a sudden turns it into like, well, now the bad guy stopped fighting and you, you know, hit him with a pipe or a bat or you stabbed him or you shot him or some sort of like terrible thing, like that, that's inexcusable, right? So I tell my students, if you hit somebody after, Japanese martial arts, we use the word yame. Yame means stop. So whether we're doing karate, jujitsu, striking, grappling, whatever it is, yame. You hear stop and you hit somebody after that, you're a punk. If um, for my police students, hey, you get somebody resisting arrest and you're in a fight for your life and you're, you're trying to get them into handcuffs, once the cuffs go on, fight's over. If you hit them after that, you're a punk. You're like, you're wrong. You know, uh, for my students that, that compete in kickboxing or MMA or any of those things, you hear the bell and you hit somebody after that, you're a punk. You're, you're in the wrong. So the rule is, when they stop fighting, you stop fighting. Keep your guard. Be aware. Pay attention to your surroundings. Like, be ready in case somebody else jumps in. But when the fight's over, you stop. And you stop when they stop. So that way, when you're being recorded and you were defending yourself, a situation you couldn't walk your way out, talk your way out, run your way out, whatever, and you had to fight, well, when they stop fighting, you stop fighting. So when the cops show up and they start asking questions, you're clearly defending yourself. And there's all, like, all the witnesses and all the cameras can attest to that. And when they stop, you stop. No excessive force. So learning this stuff is cool. Knowing how to use it is even better. Having a plan so that you could use it in the event you need it, way better. Never having to use it ever is absolutely the best victory of all. But remember that if you ever have to use it, it's always for self-defense only. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.